Hey everyone, and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're gonna to take a look at a brand new 2022 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CBAR destination trailer. We're gonna take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of the RV, and then we're also gonna close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the all new 2022 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 C bar. We're gonna start here in the kitchen living room area and kind of spin our way through the RV here. So first things up, you have a power theater seat, does kick back and recline. You have USB charger ports built in, cup holders, and a storage area in the middle. That theater seat is completely freestanding, so you could kind of scoot it around, scoot it out a little bit if you're a taller person, or remove it, put in whatever you want right there. Across the front section here, you have a large height of bed sofa. This sofa flips out again into a bed, comes out real close to the island you can see there. So you could get in from each side, but you're not really walking around the foot of the uh, bed area there. You have huge windows across this whole front section here, overlooking the side of the camper and the front of the camper. This particular unit was ordered with the optional dual pane safety glass window. So you have two layers of glass. Uh, standard is single pane. Most customers seem to order it with the dual panes, but when you order it, you can pick and choose which way you want to do it. You have a 110 volt ceiling fan up top instead of a 12 volt version. The unit has whisper quiet ACs. Um, so you don't see the big square drop in. There's just a couple little returns up there that have filters in them you gotta clean out every once in a while. You can also see your duct work blowing out along with your traditional pancake lights. Across from the theater seat is your TV. And that is currently using the Insignia TV. It's on a swing arm. Just in behind the TV there on the left side is some light switches and an electric outlet there as well that you could use for cooking purposes or whatever you want to use that electric switch for. Down below you have an electric fireplace, which is basically just a fancy electric space heater, but they look pretty nice in RVs. Just above that is a storage shelf, which would be great for satellite box or cable box or Blu-ray player, whatever you want to put in there. And then just above that is your IRV technology stereo and a couple speakers. And then you also have some outdoor speakers you'll see when we get out there. Above the TV is some storage you can see in the cabinet area there. Pretty much all linoleum floor in this area, except on the main slide out. It is a flush floor slide, so they use the carpet in that section to kind of hide the mechanics over there. On the end of the island here, you can also see there is a central vacuum outlet right there. Over here, you have the big graystone oven. So down below here, you can see there's two pull-out kind of like spice rack or canned good rack drawers here. Uh, again, have the light inside that oven. It's glass front. You have the light up knobs. It does have a fan built in. Then up top there is a four burner stove top. Going on up a little bit, you have the large LG microwave and there is some storage up above there as well. Kind of stepping back here, you do have kind of a decorative pendant light area hanging down here. The island area here, you have the high rise spring sprayer faucet and you have an undermount stainless sink, which does have the dual sinks, sink bowls here and the left side is a little larger than the right side. And then it has the little drain covers a lot of people, when you're washing your dishes, just kind of set some stuff on there and let it drain out. Down below on this side of the island, you have your propane leak detector. And you can see there's some storage underneath. 
and the little uh, sponge holder flip down drawer. But in that storage underneath, they had that trash can and then also the central vac is under there to change out the bag. Over on the right side, you have four full extending pull out ball bearing drawer guided drawers. Over here, you have a little pantry area here and it has four full extending drawers that foot pull out here. And there's also an electric outlet back in there. So in case you wanted to plug something in, but quite a bit of pantry space there. There is a little bit of storage up above that refrigerator. And this particular unit currently has the LG refrigerator. So you have the freezer on bottom. It's a two drawer freezer on bottom and in the fridge on top. Now this may or may not be what you get, unfortunately, when you order your RV. Due to the supply chain issues right now, refrigerators are a little tough for them to come by. So they are currently switching between a few different refrigerators. Um, they're all basically about this size, but some of them have had one single drawer down below. Some have had a side-by-side -side kind of setup. Um, so there are a couple different fridges depending on what's available at the time of build. On the side of the island down here, you can kind of see there is some LED light strips. There's some little toe kick stuff on this side. And then you also have an electric outlet down here as well. Spinning back around here, and this is why they call it the C-Bar. It's basically the cottage bar, they call it. Um, up top, there is a turbo exhaust fan here with the uh, rain sensor and stuff built in. There's controls on the hallway wall you'll see when we get over there. You have another Insignia TV over here, so you can kind of see things over here. Get you a couple of bar stools or something and set up here. And you got like a little party bar area here. There's a window over here as well you can see. Um, while we're talking about windows here, they are using the roller shades, the day and the night roller shades in the living room area and obviously the bar area. But when you get to the bedroom, it just has a nightshade. On the wall over there is the electric switch for your ceiling fan, electric outlet, and some more USB charger ports. On the wall over on the left, there is the King Wi-Fi uh, internet system. Basically, it's pre-wired for. You still have to subscribe to some sort of internet service, but a lot of campgrounds have Wi-Fi, and you can use this to try and draw in their Wi-Fi if they let you. Or get your own subscription to something and kind of do it that way. Up above, there is some storage above the TV area. You have kind of a little shelf space and wine rack on each side, a little sink area here. There's the control panel, which has like your slide button, awning button, some light switches, your monitor panels, your 12 volt tank heaters for wintertime use, uh, all right there on that area. Down below here, you can see you got a little bit of storage area, little sponge drawer thing again, and a couple drawers on the right. The furnace return is also down there. And then you do have another little mini fridge over here as well. And then there's some shelf space underneath the bar area. So pretty cool little setup here. Really nice countertops. Big sliding glass door. Here in the hallway area, you have your AC controls and your furnace control. This is a dual climate uh, control thermostat here by Dometic. So you can control one or both of your ACs at the same time, turning them on and off. And you can also, again, control that furnace. The ACs, when you order it, they do have an option for the electric heat pump feature. You still get your gas furnace, but you could also put a heat pump on each of your ACs if you want and use them that way. And then this is the turbo exhaust fan controls here. 
in the bathroom area here it's a decent sized bathroom especially for a trailer you have tall ceiling heights here again where you lose a lot of these ceiling heights in trailers but being a destination trailer it is higher there's quite a bit of uh, storage space here for your towels and linens foot flush toilet porcelain toilet one piece molded fiberglass shower sliding glass panels there skylight up above there is another turbo exhaust fan up here as well and then you have a medicine cabinet area small little sink area and some storage down below as well and then they use a sliding door that you can uh, kind of close off the bathroom with on back into your bedroom area here you have another 110 volt ceiling fan instead of a 12 volt version second air is also located back here so you can see those returns up there and again they're both ducted blowing throughout the rv here this one was ordered with the king size bed they do offer a queen bed and they also offer an upgraded luxury king mattress or queen mattress so you can kind of pick and choose what you want your uh, bed to be there's an electric outlet and USB charger ports on each side. Window on each side of the bed does open. Above the windows there, you have kind of a little shelf space where you could put some stuff if you wanted to. Then obviously you can see the nice overhead cabinets up above the bed. Individual little reading light things up top there. Now this one was ordered with the optional electric bedroom wall heater. And that is where it gets placed right here. It has its own little thermostat and stuff built in. Light switches and the uh, ceiling fan switch here on the wall. Normally the unit comes standard with linoleum back here in the bedroom as well. This customer chose to do the carpet, rebond carpet padding and everything. Um, so you do have carpet in this video that you're seeing. The bed does raise up, so there is some storage at the foot of the bed that you can access without raising up the bed, or you have the storage underneath that you can access for the bed up or from outside. Closet area here going all the way across the back section right here. Pretty good amount of closet space. And then if you do the residential water heater, which is standard, there's an on off switch for it back there in the closet wall. Down below is your electric box with your breakers and fuses. Stepping on back here a little bit more, um, you can see there is a stackable washer dryer in this unit. This customer ordered it with that optional feature. If you don't do the washer dryer, you just have a big closet there. A little bit of space on the left side as well. And then you also have some overhead cabinet space above that washer dryer area and then above the closet also. TV over top of the window here. Uh, it is again mounted. You can obviously see there's room to probably put you a 40 inch TV up there aftermarket or something if you wanted to. Uh, but the 32 inch is what they do with the factory does their TV up there. Another big window overlooking the campsite area. Then you have four full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers and the top actually raises up on that dresser. So there's kind of some hidden storage down there as well. And then you have another door going straight in and out of your bedroom area here. All right, we are going to head to the outside. I wanna show you what it looks like outside. And then we're gonna come back in and close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. So we'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the brand new 2022 Cedar Creek Cottage 40C bar here. We're gonna start here on the door side of the RV and kind of spin our way around. So first things up, they use a true high gloss gel coat fiberglass exterior standard on the RV. You have a lower metal skirting around the bottom section. 
This one again was ordered with the dual pane safety glass windows. So again, you have two layers of glass. They are deep tent safety glass windows. You have the optional slide out awning covers over top of the rooms that you're seeing in this video here. The unit has a power awning with LED light strip built in, adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff, and it has a manual override in this front arm head in case of an electronic failure. Now they do offer an option for a second awning, which would actually attach to the side of the slide out and come out. This customer chose not to do that feature, but it is available if you order your RV. Large folding entry handle to help you get in and out. And next to that entry handle, there is your model number. So if you're out shopping at a dealer's lot, look usually by that main entry door to see that model number so you can let your salesperson know what RV you liked. Traditional RV entry steps. These are the traditional hover steps rated for 300 pounds. Um, they use these steps mainly because most people buying a destination trailer are building a deck uh, some kind of overhead porch or something to really enclose and just park the thing permanently. So they don't go upgrade to the traditional more ride step above steps and stuff that you'd see on their fifth wheel versions. Do have the tented sliding glass door here. Again, is a dual pane door as well. Traditional porch light up above as well. You have easy lube hubs on your axles, four wheel drum brakes. Um, it does have the never adjust Dexter brakes as well, uh, which basically means they're self adjusting. Um, there is 16 inch tires on here. We'll get to the exact specs of everything when we get over to the stickers. But again, nothing super fancy on the, the tires and rims and stuff. Again, they're kind of expecting you to park that and kind of cover that stuff up. There you have an outside cable outlet and electric outlet. There's two outdoor speakers. These are down kind of nice and low, so they're just a little bit easier to hear. The unit has eight stabilizer jacks on it. A lot of destination trailers don't come with any as a standard. You can opt in for four. Cedar Creek here has eight as a standard to really just kind of help stabilize it out when you're setting it all up. On the back here, you have a traditional RV entry door and screen door. Does have the little peephole in the window or in the door there to help you see out. Going on around to the back side here, you have a traditional flat back rear end. Um, does have a pre wire for that observation camera. Most people aren't really traveling around with a cottage. They're again kind of taking them and parking them one place. Uh, but it is pre-wired for that. If you want to use it, you can add that on aftermarket. Talk with your sales guy about that. The little black square there is the dryer vent. Again, you've seen when we were inside, this was ordered with the optional washer dryer. And that is where the factory installs the vent at. Now down here, you can see the little storage compartment open up here. It's really more of an access compartment. It allows you to get into the hydraulic pump and the selector valves to turn the hydraulic slides on and off individually. So you can manually override from that compartment. You can also, again, turn on and off those slides so that somebody can't accidentally run them in or out if you don't want them to. In this back compartment here, there is your 20 gallon electric water heater does have a bypass on it and a drain out and everything right here. Um, but it is a 20 gallon electric water heater standard. You can opt in for a different traditional RV uh, water heater if you want. Talk with your sales guy about that as well. Storage across the back section here underneath the bed. So if you want to, you can access it from inside like you've seen, or you can come outside and grab some stuff from here. Down below here, you can kind of see that underneath section as well. And again, you have your black and your bath tank coming out right here. Uh, 
everything comes out of this one tube, but you have two separate handles right here. And you're gonna have a third handle in another location. I'll show you when we get around to that sign. Your city water, black water, and fresh tank fill are all located right here. And then you do have this little access door here to get in behind the shower area. And that's where your water pump is located in your winterizing kit, uh, along with the little filter screen. 50 amp detachable power cord here. It's probably 25 or 30 feet long, roughly. Furnace exhaust out there just above the tires. And then you have a cable satellite inlet above that running light there. Now down below in the back by the dump area, there is some low point water drains. Just in front of the axles over here, there is a freshwater tank drain. And then your gray or galley tank dump handle that's called is right under here. So it is a long cable handle. Uh, but it is placed right underneath the here and it will dump out of the port in the back back here. Again, slide out awning covers on this side. It's a nice option to have. Now, if you're going to park it and put it underneath of a, a roof or something like that, which some customers do, you don't really need those toppers. But if it's gonna be out and exposed to the weather all the time, it's not a bad idea to add the toppers. You have your stove exhaust up there, and there is a little flapper in there that you have to open when you're ready to use it. Underneath of here, you can see pop up there is your ice maker drain and on off valve right there. So it is kind of hidden up underneath of there to get to that ice maker. Popping up here real quick, we're gonna pop up these data stickers for the RV. So the very first sticker popping up here is gonna be your main data sticker. Has your production date, VIN number, axle size, tire size, uh, but most importantly, this sticker has your gross vehicle weight sticker. This has the basically the most you can load the RV up to, axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined. Don't exceed that number, very important. The next sticker popping up is gonna be your unloaded vehicle weight sticker. And on this sticker, it basically tells you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line, along with the length of the RV as well. The next sticker popping up is gonna be your cargo carrying capacity sticker, just telling you how much gear you're allowed to load into the RV. And then the next sticker after that is going to be your tire sticker, just again telling you that tire size information, but most importantly telling you your proper tire pressure. Do not let the tire pressure drop too low, guys, because the thing can't hold the uh, total weight of the RV if you let it get too low. Uh, you'll have blowouts and stuff like that traveling down the road. Again, this is a destination trailer, so you're pretty much just taking it and parking it somewhere normally. But again, you want to also check that tire pressure from time to time, especially if you're going to move it. Now up front here, you have a really nice fiberglass front cap. Uh, when the factory ships it in, it does have this plastic stuff over the front windows. And basically that just peels off when you are getting it all set up and everything. The hitch right here, this whole V section is actually detachable. So you can not unbolt that and block the RV in the front section if you want to. Uh, some customers choose to do that so they can shorten up the overall length and fit it into some campsites. There's also a gas port down here. So you could plug in like a portable grill or something if you wanted. You have two 30 pound propane tanks underneath this bottle cover here. There is a area back here where you could put one, maybe two batteries, depending on the size of the batteries that you go with. It comes with one battery from Couch's RV Nation if you buy from them, but none from the factory. So wherever you buy from, make sure you do at least get one battery. There are heavy duty safety chains here. Uh, manual jack on this thing. Again, they're not expecting you to move it much, but you could put a power jack on it aftermarket if you wanted. Two and five sixteenths hitch ball, traditional seven way Bargman plug, breakaway cable, all that type of stuff that you find on every RV. 
All right, guys, we are going to head back inside. Oh, hold on a minute. Let's pop up the picture of that roof so you can check that out real quick. Um, again, up top here on the roof, you can kind of see this one had dual ACs on it, uh, plumbing stack vents, your cable and or uh, TV antenna up top there, all that type of stuff, roof vents and things. Make sure you guys get up there from time to time and check that out. All right, we're gonna head back in and close it up now, show you what it looks like closed. All right, guys, we're now back inside the new 2022 Cottage 40C bar here, and I wanna show you what it looks like closed. Now, this unit has three hydraulic slide outs on it, and basically that allows you to run the system in and out with one button. There is, again, individual on-off controls in that back storage area or access point area in the rear of the RV that you've seen when we were outside. So we're gonna come in here and on the control panel here at the bar is where we gotta run these in and out. There is an on off switch right here next to the button. Um, so you can kind of flip that off. That way nothing really happens when you first hit the button. Turn it on. I'm gonna set the camera down back here just to kind of show you what it looks like when the bedroom part comes in. So you can kind of see this, hopefully. It helps a little bit. So it's basically gonna come straight in and it goes straight out. Again, these are hydraulic slides. So when you hit the button, it kind of releases the pressure a little bit on all of them. But basically that came straight in and stopped. So you can kind of see when this is closed up, you still can come in here and access your bedroom. You'd have to climb over the bed to get to the main closet area if you wanted, but you could still come in here and technically use the bed if you needed to. I'm going on around to this side here. We're gonna continue to hit the button to bring things in. You can kind of see here the first thing to move is our kitchen slide. Now, very, very important, guys, when you are closing these up, we're gonna let off the button here for a second, make sure your slide-out floor is clean. So no rocks, pebbles, leaves, twigs, anything, kids' toys, any of that type of stuff. Because these slides will run over whatever's in the floor and possibly damage your floor. So make sure it's nice and clean before you close this stuff up. Kind of see how close everything gets there. Go on back here and hit the button some more and bring in the other room. Now, this other room is a flush floor slide. So when this comes in, it does kind of tilt upward a little bit to come back in over top of the floor, where when it's out, it kind of drops down level with the floor. All right, so you can kind of see we're not really able to go any further up into here when the slide is closed. Um, but again, it comes in real close to that bar or that island and everything right there. You got to make sure that leaf is closed so you don't damage your island. Very, very important to do. Uh, but it all comes in nice and snug and tight when you close it all up. All right, guys, thanks again for taking the time to watch my videos. I really do appreciate you guys. Again, don't forget to check out the guys at Couches RV Nation. And also, if you don't mind, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks again, guys.